In this display, you have a display showing how different species of birds have different beaks adapted to eating different types of food in the mud. Here you have a very big grove of bamboo. Now the name of Sungai Bulo actually comes from bamboo because the Malay word for bamboo is bulo. And I suppose there were bamboo groves growing here and that's why they named this place the Bamboo River, Sungai Bulo. You can see how wide the branches of this bamboo grow all the way to there. And here you have a small monitor lizard in the bushes. They can get quite big here. If you see a monitor lizard, just look at it. Don't try and touch it and don't chase it because they have sharp teeth. And if you try and catch it, you may get bitten. Okay, this is called the Malayan water monitor. It is the largest species of monitor lizard found in Singapore. And the largest ones of these can actually grow as long as the Komodo dragon, although they're not as fat and not as heavy. It's called the water monitor because it likes to live near water. And as you can see, um, they like to go into water to catch fish and small animals on which they feed. You can see that the monitor lizard has a tongue that it keeps sticking out of its mouth, a long forked tongue like a snake. Can you tell me what the purpose of the tongue is and why does it keep sticking out its tongue? There's something for you to find out. Here you have another large monitor lizard swimming in the pond. Notice how it keeps sticking out its tongue every now and then. Can you guess what the purpose of it sticking out its tongue is? The monitor lizard has a very long tail which it uses for swimming. When you see them swimming in the water, they keep their arms folded by the sides of their body and they swim using their tail. The local Chinese dialect is called Si Ka Zua, which means four-legged snake. It's called that because like a snake, it's got a forked tongue that it keeps sticking out. So if you only see the, the head of it, it looks like a snake. Watch it. Here at Sungai Bulo, you can also see crocodiles. This is a small juvenile estuarine crocodile, Crocodilus porosus. The estuarine crocodile is found throughout Asia, from India all the way down to northern Australia. The very large individuals of this species pose a danger to people. And there have been cases of uh, children and people being eaten up by crocodiles. But so far, none in Sungai Bulo because they don't grow that big over here. Now, these crocodiles are probably pretty used to people because they're not running away. So they know that we're not going to attack them. So as long as you leave them alone, they should leave you alone because they're quite well fed. They have lots of fishes to eat. So I don't think they will come after people. Okay, here you have a good example of a crocodile small estuarine crocodile found in Sungai Bulo. Crocodiles are very rarely seen in Singapore and this is the only place where you can rarely, where you can regularly see crocodiles. The estuarine crocodile can grow very big to three or four meters long and the very big ones can and have eaten people in the past but that's quite rare. Okay, there goes Mr. Crocodile. Bring it right, bro. Turn like that. Okay, keep it on the top.
The crocodiles are at the top of the food chain in the mangrove swamp. Actually crocodiles and human beings. Because crocodiles will eat human beings and human beings will eat crocodiles. So both of those are the apex predators here. Now it's at high tide. The tide is very high and it's going down slowly. At high tide you see a lot of crabs climbing up on the trees, like these two crabs here climbing up this slanted mangrove tree. Why do the crabs climb up the trees at high tide? That's something for you to find out. See all the crabs climbing up the tree to get out of the water? See at high tide, the water comes up and covers almost all of the roots of the tree. And these tree climbing crabs climb out of the water and stay above the water line until the tide goes down. This fish over there with the spots on its side is called an archer fish. The reason it's called an archer fish is that it can shoot. An archer shoots arrows and the archer fish shoots droplets of water. You can see that archer fishes like to hang around near the surface of the water. That's because they're looking for insects on the branches of the trees above them. If the archer fish sees an ant or some other insect on a tree, it will actually spit water and knock it down into the water and then eat it. It's very accurate and it's able to adjust for the, the refraction caused by the water and still aim accurately. Look, there's a fish climbing the tree. Why is the fish on the tree instead of in the water? Okay, what kind of fish is this? Okay, this is a mud skipper. As the name implies, it can skip across the mud. But in this case, this one is climbing a tree instead of being on the mud. It's now high tide and the water is covering everything. The water is even coming up the tree and that's why the fish is on the tree. Now why is it the fish prefers to be outside the water than inside the water? Normally you expect fishes to be in the water and not climbing out, isn't it? Over here on this tree, you can see some other animals climbing out of the water. You have some tree climbing crabs and lots of these uh, periwinkle type snails. See this snail is actually crawling downwards towards the water slowly. So the snails are coming down. The tide is actually slowly going down, but I don't know why the snails are coming down. It's just passing by the leg of that crab. And our friend, the fish, is still on the tree. It seems to prefer being out of the water than in it. It's now high tide. This mangrove tree has what is known as prop roots. Why are they called prop roots? And what do you think the function of these roots is? mangrove tree with prop roots. Okay, if you look north from Sungai Bulo and you see some buildings across the water, those are actually in Johor, in Malaysia, across the Straits of Johor. So you can see how close Singapore and Malaysia are. During the Second World War, when the Japanese invaded Singapore, this is where they came across from Johor, at this part of the Straits, because here it is very narrow. You can see for yourself how close the buildings in Johor are. So they came across by boats into this area and they overran the Australian defenders and this was the start of the end for the fall of Singapore during World War II. This is another view of a set of prop roots on a mangrove tree. You can see how tall the tree is that is supported by these roots. Here's another view of the spider's web. Okay, here is a spider on a very big web. This is a golden orb web spider. Scientific name, Nephilia. It spins this very big web that's strong enough to catch small birds. In some countries, the fishermen actually cut down these webs and use them to catch small fish. The web is stretching all the way from this small mangrove sapling to that big tree over there. It's a very big web. Okay. In this freshwater pond, you have little gouramis. 
These are fishes that are able to breathe atmospheric oxygen. They are air breathing fishes. Why would fishes that live here need to breathe air? We have a group of guramis in the shallow pond water. Guramis are able to breathe air. See, they're breathing atmospheric oxygen. And why would a fish living in a shallow muddy pond need to breathe air? There you have a snakehead, another air breathing fish. There you have a snake head. Okay, Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve is a good place to watch migratory birds. These are wading birds because they wade in the water. They've got very long legs so that they can wade in the water and the body of the bird is still out of the water. It doesn't get its body wet. Okay, here you can see some white colored egrets roosting near the water's edge. Egrets also have long necks and a sharp beak. This is another kind of tree, roots or mangrove tree. In Malay, this type of tree is called api api, which means fire. So Sungai api api in Pasir Ris is named after this tree, with the pencil-like roots called pneumatophores. Pneumatophore means air root. These roots help the tree to breathe, help the roots of the tree to get oxygen in the mud because mud is very little oxygen, mangrove mud. Okay, near this sluice gates, you can see a lot of fish <coughs> gathered here. The ones with black dots on the sides are archer fish and the rest are a mixture of green chromites and Mayan cichlids. The green chromites, you can actually see them feeding. They're eating the algae growing on the sides of the rocks. Those are green chromites there. Oh, that was some fish jumping. following us. It is, right? It looks like... You don't believe, right? You see, we walk, he'll walk with us. Buddy, buddy, really, right?